So I'm going to start out uh, here in the book of Mark. And it's funny because this week I prepared, started preparing a little earlier than usual because I knew my weekend would be kind of busy. And uh, so I think it's really cool when the Lord shows us something and then he and then it comes out on Sundays or however that works together. Do you ever have that happen? Or even you come here on a Tuesday and you say, oh, wow, I was just praying that or whatever. So when that happens, I always take that as something God's really trying to get through to us. Um, and so uh, we heard about watching and, and praying as well on Sunday. And I think this is what he's really trying to get through to us uh, for this time period. So in Mark 14, he says, Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Excuse me, uh, Simon, why are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we know this is Jesus, and he's coming. He's going to pray. He's about uh, knowing what's going to happen. And So he's in the garden and he goes to pray and he tells them to watch and pray. And if that were, if I were Jesus doing that, I would have said, will you do me a favor, watch, because the people were coming to get him, right? So watch, but also um, pray. And I would say, pray for me. But that's not what Jesus says here. He says, watch and pray, lest you what? Enter into temptation. So he was telling them, Yes, I'm going to go through some things, but I'm going to go pray for me, and you go pray for you because you don't want temptation to enter in. And so Jesus is encouraging him here, watch, pray about this temptation, and remember that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That is our Verse for the day, for sure. Because when we look at this, and we often think, okay, spirit is willing, but we see that the word willing just means ready. So he's saying the spirit is always ready to help us in our temptations. What is our job is to watch, keep our eyes open, let's listen, let's hear, but also to pray. So here he says in Luke, and he will turn uh, many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This verse is God speaking uh, to uh, Zacharias, who's about to have uh, Zechariah, about to have um, John the Baptist. And he's saying, you're going to have this boy, you're going to name him John. And what he's going to do is um, the spirit of the power of Elijah will be on him because Jesus' uh, spirit, that hadn't all happened yet, right? So the spirit that they would look to in the Old Testament was God's spirit through Elijah, because Elijah did many signs and miracles and wonders. So here he's saying this boy is going to have the spirit of the Lord with him, and he's going to affect the hearts. The spirit of the Lord is going to reach right into the hearts of the people. And what is he going to do in their hearts? He's going to make them ready for what? for this change that was about to come. This is a time God's doing the exact same thing with us. He's using God's spirit to pierce our hearts to have us ready for this time of change that we, we are in. And we've, he's been doing that all along. So he says he's going to make the people ready and prepare them for the Lord because they knew Jesus, Jesus was coming and their hearts needed to be prepared for that. And he used John the Baptist to do that. And so he used John and he said, you know, he's, John was a little rough around the edges when you read about him. And he had a boldness about him. What gave him that boldness? I believe what gave him that boldness is the spirit of Elijah that God said he was going to put on him. So this was a prophecy that he had given the dad that indeed came to pass as we read the rest of the story. But again, what made him ready? It was the spirit that was willing. It was the spirit inside of him and his own spirit being open to that, that made him ready to be able to do what God had for him to do. And in Revelation 19, it tells us, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And we've heard that. We know that. We know that just like the spirit of God came 
to that, to, as that prophecy and came upon that little boy, I've been imagining, stayed with him through his life till he needed it at a time where he was ready. God's done the same thing with us. He's put that spirit in us. He's put that power in us for a time with, to make ourselves ready. And sometimes we have to make ourselves ready. We have to do what God has asked us to do so that we're ready at the time um, that we need to fulfill the prophecies in our life. Because just like John, God's given each and every one of us a prophecy. This is what you're going to do. This is what I've called you for. And many times I remember um, being a young person thinking, oh, what am I going to do? That was a big deal. What am I going to do? I had a lot of choices and sometimes too many choices. I call it selection anxiety. Just give me two choices. It's a lot easier. Other people love lots of choices. When you go shopping, you like a lot of choices. Me, I get selection anxiety. Too many choices. And so when we see this, God has told us, okay, this is what is unfolding in your life and I'm making you ready for it, but you have to make yourself ready. There are things that he asks us to do, reading our word, like we opened the opening scripture, putting on our armor, being aware of these things so that we can make ourselves ready. And in these group of scriptures here, I always ask the question, well, what do I have to be ready for? Ready for what? Well, he tells us here what we should be doing while we're making ourselves ready and getting ready for what? Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share. Here in Timothy's talking about people that have a lot of things, you know, don't, don't get confidence in all the things you have, but share them and be ready to give. Each and every one of us always needs to be ready to give. I know one of my kids growing up used to give away all his toys, like literally all of his toys. So a friend would come over and he'd say, oh, I like this toy, and he'd be playing. He'd say, you can have it. And i go, oh, that's so nice. And then the next one comes, you can have that. I say, hey, wait a minute. And the third, fourth, hey, you can't give away all your toys, right? But there's something about that giving heart that God wants us to have. And he makes us ready. How? Through the flesh? I doubt it. That's mine. Don't take it. It's more through the spirit where he makes us ready to be able to share. Also, he says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teach it. We all know that. And he's made us ready in this season to preach the word. How many of you had opportunity to share the Lord with someone recently? Yeah, it's an open time. It's a time for us to be able to easily share the word. Why? Because people need solutions. And when there's a lot of problems, I always say there's a lot of answers. His name is Jesus. And so he makes us ready to preach this word in season and out of season. That's why it's, I think it's so important to have ourselves ready the best we can at all times. Now, we're all not going to be happy all the time. We're all not going to not have any problem, you know, and all that. But be ready to the best of our ability that we can, that when somebody comes, and it's usually when you're having a, oftentimes it's when you're having a bad day, right? Or when something's going wrong and somebody needs you there or you got a word, and what does that do? When you're having kind of an off day and you minister to the word to somebody else, what does it do for you? It strengthens you, doesn't it? It builds you up. And that's why he's telling us, pre preach that word and be ready in this season, even if you don't feel ready. I like when people say, I was going to go to church, but I didn't feel good. I go, as long as you're not contagious, why did you come to church? I don't come to church if you're contagious, right? And give it to everyone. But I didn't feel like it or I was tired, or I was this. No, be ready in season and out of season. And he says in 1 Peter, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who what? Who asks you. A reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I had to learn this. I was ready to give a defense to everybody, period. <laughs> But read the rest of this. Who asks you for a reason of your hope? I didn't ask you, but I would tell you anyways. <laughs> Still a lot of part of that is in me. But this scripture is encouraging us. When people ask us, well, why do you believe what you believe? We need an answer. I remember there was a time early on in church. I had just been going to church for, I don't know, not very long. 
And I was uh, taking my very first class. It wasn't here. It was at another church. And it was like this four-week get to know you, learn about Jesus class. And I didn't know anything when I first came to church and uh, when I answered my first altar call. And so I had a friend, uh, and she was um, this friend of mine who was Jewish. And she said, well, I want to come to church with you. And I said, really? And she said, yeah. I go, cool, come to church with me. And she came to church with me, and I was really excited. I thought that was really neat. And she asked me after, she said, what does it mean to be saved? And I go, hmm. Tears welled up in my eyes. And I said, I have no idea. And I was so disappointed that I didn't know. And you know how God is when you, something like that occurs? He always gives you a second chance, doesn't he? And you better believe I studied it after that, right? I said, that's never going to happen to me again, ever. And so fast forward 12, 13 years, and I'm up north, and I'm getting a ride with one of my friends, uh, my sister's friends, and we're driving, and she's Jewish. And she looks at me, and we had kind of a long drive, and she says, yeah, I know you go to church a lot and everything. Let me ask you a question. What does it mean to be saved? Ah, ah, let me tell you about it. For the next 40 minutes in the car, she got an earful. And see, that's how God does, to be able to give a defense. And that doesn't mean to go on the defensive. A lot of times we think, well, we got to prove our point. No, we stand on God's word. We don't have to fight for his word. They're just asking, tell me about it. What does it mean to be saved? I hear that word, teach me, exhort me, convince me. And that's what God is speaking to us about this. When we look uh, at this scripture, that's about being ready to give an answer. And sometimes we learn the hard way, like I did. I mean, I shouldn't be so hard on myself. I was brand new, but it didn't matter to me. I didn't know what to say. And now if there's a question somebody asked me, I said, I don't know. I'll find out. Let's study it or go ask Pastor Lore. Those are my answers usually. (laughs) But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, that when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before me. You will deny me three times that you know me. We know this is Peter. When Jesus is getting ready to go to be crucified, he tells him, he says, it doesn't matter. I'm ready. I'm going to go with you. And we know the story. He wasn't ready. He thought he was ready. And he says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. And that's exactly what he has, what happened to him. But Peter thought he was ready. He wasn't ready. Sometimes we think we're ready for more than what God has made us ready for because it's his timing that's important. For Peter, he didn't want to think about that. He didn't want to think. All he wanted to think is how much he loved the Lord and he wanted to be there for him. But God in his wisdom knows when we're ready. When I first started taking the... um, class with Mama Jean. It was very exciting to me. And every class, I would just get more excited and more excited and more excited. And then I said, well, maybe I could teach this to all the people by where I live because they need to know this. They might not come to church, but maybe I could go to this community center and we could teach. So I talked to Pastor Lauren about it. He said, yeah, okay, that'd be fine or whatever. And I go, oh, that'll be so great. And so I put these ads in the paper and did all this stuff and so excited. And my first class comes, not one person came. I said, well, maybe next week. Go to the next week, nobody came. I said, "Uh uh-oh, what happened? I was Peter. (laughs) I wasn't ready. But Pastor Lauren talked about how sometimes we take spiritual principles, try to apply them to the natural and Is that how he said it? Yes. And so that's what I did. I took this spiritual thing and wanted to teach this class, and I used all my natural ability from my business background to put ads in the paper, to market it, to do all this stuff, and guess what? It didn't work. (laughs) That taught me a lesson, that God opens the doors when he's ready to open the doors, that we don't need to have to worry about, okay, Lord, have you made me ready? Have you not made me ready? 
We know this is a season that God has made us ready, and each one of us has a part to play. The key is, can I know what that is? And can I stay with the Spirit and let the Spirit make me ready instead of going back and forth from flesh to Spirit, from flesh to Spirit? And in Luke 21, it says, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness, the cares of life, that the day may come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare to all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Here he's talking being ready when the master comes. But what I want to show about this is take heed lest your hearts be weighed down. And that's what happens. Bonnie was talking about our hearts being strong. And that's what happens to us sometimes. The part I would like to see in this is the cares of this life. I'm not going to do the drunkenness thing and the carousing, but the cares of this life. That's what happens. Sometimes it just weights us down. And it's that flesh part of us that weights us down. And I put over this, the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak, but you are not. You know that? The Bible says our flesh is weak, but we are not weak because we are in God and God is strong. And sometimes we think, oh, my flesh is weak, so I am weak. No. It's like if you're exercising and you have weak abs. A lot of people have weak abs, right? So, oh, my abs are so weak. Does it make your whole body weak? No. So we have to remember that our flesh is weak, hard for us to live in, to control, to do all that. But it doesn't mean we are weak because we are in God. We are strong. And in Habakkuk, we read, uh, Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. I will stand watch and set myself on the rampart, which means walled city, and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. I was really excited when I read this scripture. This is Habakkuk. And what Habakkuk is doing, he is a prophet, and he was having this whole conversation with God. It's him and God in the book of Habakkuk. And he's complaining to God. He's saying everything's a mess out here. (laughs) He said there's violence in the land. People aren't listening. They're walking away from the Lord. Nobody's in church. I'm upset about this, God. And what are you going to do about it? And I read that in Habakkuk, and I thought, oh, is this not the day we live in? I felt like I was right there with him. What is going on? There's violence in the land. People are turning. They're doing Strange things. What is going on here, Lord? When are you going to do something about it? And what does the Lord say to him? Stand watch, he says. Um, or, I'm sorry, he says, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though I told. He says, be utterly astounded. Wow, I like that word. And that's what I'm going to believe for us this morning, that God is going to do a work and we're going to be utterly astounded at what he's going to do. Amen. I believe that because that's the way he works, that he just, whew, I always say that, just one touch, just one prayer, just one look, and it's done. And that's how God does. So for Habakkuk, That was his word that he stood on. I believe the word of the the Lord. He believed the word of the Lord. We need to believe the the, the word of the Lord when he says this. And he says, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to stay with the Lord. I'm going to stand with the Lord. And I'm going to watch this happen. And whatever he speaks to me, Habakkuk is saying, I will answer when I'm corrected. So what was Habakkuk doing? He was a prophet, so we know he had the Spirit of the Lord with him. We know he was the one the Lord showed him a vision, write the vision and make it plain. But he was in the Spirit. He was saying, let my spirit be open to God's Spirit. So what? So I can open my ears. That's what God is continuing reminding us. 
When we're feeling like we're in that flesh, what do we need to do? We need to open our ears, open our eyes to the spirit of our, let our own spirit be open so the Holy Spirit can come in and give us that direction that we need or that correction what we need, whichever it, it is. And in Luke 20, uh, 12, he says, Blessed are the servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself, have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. This is a scripture Pastor Lauren used on Sunday. And I put over this watch for God. And so in this, there's different kinds of watching. He tells in the beginning, he says, watch, lest you be tempted, meaning watch yourself, be careful. But here he's saying, watch for God. Where are our eyes focused? What are we looking for? He says, watch for God. And that's what he's encouraging them here. And when he comes, Pastor Lauren brought out, he's going to serve us. Also watch ourselves. For it will come as a snare to all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass to stand before the Son of Man. And this is continuing on in the other scripture we read about our hearts. He says, watch, therefore, and pray always. So important that these two things go together. When we're watching and we're looking and we're seeing, we always need to remember to pray. Because when we pray, we are opening up our spirits automatically. Automatically, when you pray, your spirit is open to God. Even if you're in a cranky mood, your spirit's still open to God. Even if there's sadness, your spirit's still opening to God. Because your spirit is connecting with God's spirit. And that's what he's encouraging us here so that we can escape these things. So that we can get out of our flesh and into the spirit. And as a second part of that, we'll talk about prayer. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke the word of God with boldness. This is in Acts chapter 4. In Acts, usually we read in the part in the beginning of Acts where the Holy Spirit came and filled them all and they spoke with other tongues. This is a different situation. When they were preaching... And when they were preaching, what happened? They were so filled with the Spirit that, again, the place was sh shaken, filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. When there's a group of people and you're there, the Holy Spirit's there, and it's time for that boldness because that's the example they're giving here. It doesn't matter. People were coming against them. There were people criticizing them. They were threatening to put them in jail. They didn't care. Because the Holy Spirit came. And when the Holy Spirit came, it gives you boldness. It gives you confidence. It's the same for us today, that things can be shaken. Things can be shaken in a way where, in this case, they, the people, didn't know what, nobody knew what to do. The people they were preaching to were all excited. The people against them were all mad. But ir irregardless, the place was shaken. And he says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always. So now Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or death. Paul is saying, I know I'm in chains right now. And I know it doesn't look so good, but what did Paul say? Paul's so confident. He said, I know this will turn out for my deliverance. That's what we need to speak this morning. I know this will turn out for our deliverance. How? Through prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Paul had those two things that he knew the Lord would act upon, and that's his prayer and the Spirit. Staying in the spirit, he knew it would turn out. And according, he says, to his expectation. He says, and he didn't know how it was going to turn out by life or death, but he knows that all things work together for good. Those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's what Paul was talking about here. And that's what God has for us this morning. Through prayer and through the spirit, we can know 
that it's all for our deliverance, we can know that God's turning it around, like the song we sing almost every week, God, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. That's what he's saying, and Paul knew that God was turning it around for his deliverance, and that the people that were watching Paul, the people that were, he was an example to, could see in him, whether they liked it or not, no matter what happened, it was good with Paul because he was doing and he was in the Lord's will. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And this is the opening uh, scripture, what, what we read. I read that. All those verses just for this verse says, praying always with prayer, for, with prayer and supplication, being watchful till the end with perseverance and supplication. In that chapter that we read, he says, put on the armor of God. And we know what the armor of God is, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And as we put all these things on, we're ready to go. No, not quite. Because we can have all that armor of God, but if we forget the prayer, we don't have the power, right? Because we know the prayer is in the power. We need the prayer and we need the spirit. So he's telling us, put on the armor. We all need the armor. We need the armor of the word. We need the armor of truth. We need peace. We need all these things, but we also need the prayer. Because with the prayer and the spirit, that is what brings for us that perseverance and that supplication or those prayers, what he's talking about for the saints. But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We know this verse that says we don't know how to pray as we ought, so what does he tell us the Holy Spirit does? He prays, he makes intercession for us, and he builds up our most holy faith. The Spirit is willing. The Spirit is ready when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we're built up, we're strengthened, peace comes, our ears are open, our eyes are open. It's where we're strong. It's where we're made strong. And that's why God encourages us over and over all throughout the Bible to pray in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to let the Spirit make us willing, uh, make us ready as the Spirit is willing. And in this final scripture, he says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul was reminding them that he's always praying for them. And this morning, God wants us to be reminded that Jesus is always praying for us. We're always praying for the names and the requests in here. You have somebody praying for you. And as we pray for others, and as we know that somebody's praying for us, it's not just, okay, yeah, I'll pray, and then maybe you pray and maybe you don't, right? When we pray, we pray. Do we, Betty? True or not true? When we pray, we pray. Not about necessarily even the words we pray, per se, because we always pray and we know the powers in Jesus' name. But it's knowing that we've got the spirit inside of us. We have this spirit that's contrary to the flesh. It's not the flesh, it's the spirit. And with that spirit and that prayer, there's nothing we can't do. That's what God is telling us this morning. Don't worry about the flesh. Be built up in the spirit so when that lack of self-control or that emotion comes up or that self-defense, they're all against me thing comes up. When you lose the job or don't get the job, when money's there or it's not there, whatever the circumstances in your life this morning, I'm sick, I'm never going to get better. No. Know that when we let ourselves operate in the spirit, the spirit's always ready. People are not always ready. If you live in my house, you know people are not always ready. And I'm not talking about me in my house. I'm ready. I'm an early person or on time. 
People are not always ready when you want them to be ready. But guess what? The spirit is. No matter when you're ready to tap into that spirit, it's there for you. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, it doesn't go away. It's with you forever. Anytime it's right there, God's spirit is always there. And the Bible says the spirit of God is everywhere, above, beneath, around. So even sec secondary with, to the Holy Spirit, God's spirit, which is also the Holy Spirit, but is always everywhere, is always ready. It's not like you have to wait. This weekend we took care of the baby. That was fun. My back's a little sore, <laughs> but that was fun. But, you know, you have to get a lot of things ready. I forgot. The bottle's not ready. Get the bottle ready. Because if the bottle's not ready, you're not going to feed the baby. And the baby's going to cry. you got to hurry up and get it ready. That's not how God works. Guess what? Good news. God is always ready. The Spirit is always ready. I love that. Amen. Amen. <laughs>